This morning we have a really amazing keynote speaker for you. Sue Gordon is the deputy director of NGA. She comes to us from a, with a distinguished career. First, she's a scientist. She's a zoologist originally, and then worked her way up and across CIA, being in charge of their operations and information. She joined NGA just a year ago as deputy director and is making just great, great, great changes there. From my perspective, she gets it. She gets who you are, and she gets how to make an organization run. So without further delay, join me in welcoming Sue Gordon. Thanks. Thank you so much. Wow, good morning. I am uh, so honored to be here. And uh, Jack, thank you. Uh, he knows full well that he drives and inspires me. And actually, I'm going to share a little inside baseball with you all today. Um, about a year ago, almost today, I met Jack for the first time right before this conference. Um, and it was my first every, ESRI conference of any kind. Um, and in fact, I had just, I was about a month into my job as the deputy director of NGA. In fact, my shine hadn't even worn off. And in Jack's iconic way of providing gracious wisdom and exquisite simplicity, he said, Sue, you're doing it wrong. And he went on to say, NGA is totally missing opportunities because you all are not positioned to take advantage of the capabilities that you have available to you. And he didn't actually say it that way, but I certainly heard the message. And since that fateful day, with an energy and passion that derives from a love of nation, we've been working side by side with Esri to rectify the situation to, and to advance our geoint capabilities. Because for us, with the mission that we have, and the imperative we feel, feel to succeed in the open, because in fact that's where the data and the people and the issues and the technology reside, we simply have no choice but to succeed. And we need some partners to do that. So we're going to talk a lot more about how and what we've done to make Jack so proud, because in fact isn't that all of our quest. Um, but first let me, it is, right? Um, totally, someone said totally, I love that. Um, but let me give you a couple of examples of what we've done and what we've been able to deliver over the past year. So last year, Robert Cordello, the director of NGA, was here speaking with you, and he shared the work we've done on the Ebola crisis, sharing our data openly on the World Wide Web via, instead of via controlled systems. And we did this to provide discoverable geoint to assist the U.S. efforts to bring an end to this crisis. And on the heels of that, in a much faster, more responsive way, we actually leapt into the fray in the recovery from the Nepal earthquake. Today, I want to tell you another success story. In partnership with Esri, we're in the middle of releasing a variety of non-classified data working with a great, great partner, the University of Minnesota's Polar Geospatial Center, to develop elevation models of Alaska and, and eventually the whole Arctic. And this is the first time that we've made detailed digital models available to the public. Models that show you the shoreline elevation and how much the water levels can rise before there's flooding. Models that can tell you how ice and snow melts will drain, how water feeds through the valleys, and how people in Arctic get their drinking water. These models can actually support anything that is dependent on elevation. And you can think of the possibilities as easily as I can. Scientific research, commercial endeavors, economic impact, military operations, and on and on. Now, I'm going to spend some time today talking about our partnerships, not only with Esri, but with others. I'll go into how we're leveraging those partnerships today and how we intend to lever leverage them for even better purpose tomorrow. A central component of this vision requires a geospatial platform in a shared environment. And the intelligence community's new enterprise-wide delivery platform, what we call GWINT Services, enables that vision and will be online this year across multiple security domains. I'm going to talk more about that in detail in a minute or two, but first let me start where I always start, with mission and need. I don't have to tell you the threats that face this nation, 
and by extension NGA, and st we still have in front of us. You know them. Cyber as a global attack platform. Radical terrorist groups with the ability to project effects globally. Regional conflicts with worldwide implications such as what's going on in Syria today. China's continued efforts to expand their ability to project military power. A re-emergent Russia with a Soviet feel. Global urbanization, where 54% of the world's population is living in cities. Climate change, stressing our natural resources such as the availability of drinking water. And as easy it is for me to say these threats, understanding them, much less countering them, is, as my dad would say, a fascinating challenge cleverly disguised as an insurmountable obstacle. Now, I know this is not a national security conference, but I suspect that you share NGA's commitment to staying well ahead of our adversaries. And it will take all of us in this room and our collective disciplines to address these fast-moving threats. It will take new ways of doing business. Simply put, what got us here will not get us where we need to be. So let's talk about the steps we've taken to pull our partners more fully and completely into what we call Team GeoInt. First of all, we're incrementally shifting from building and using agency-specific IT systems, tools, and capabilities to sharing cloud-based services. The Intelligence Community's Information Technology Environment, or iSight, is the IC-wide strategy to share information amongst agencies to allow capabilities and data to move freely between them. And NGA will be off our own infrastructure and on to shared cloud infrastructure within two years, something that sounds yawn-inducing, but trust me, there is hardly anything that will more enable everything we want to do. The result will be a more efficient model for resource sharing that can scale rapidly to meet unexpected and emergent requirements, kind of like the things I was just talking about. So I mentioned GeoInt Services is the name of the intelligence community's solution for how we share geospatial knowledge. The concept for this is breathtakingly simple. We will expose our content and your content, if you'll allow, in a way that's useful. Or as I say to my team, oh, you wanted to use it. We'll provide cloud-based, scalable, responsive, open geospatial consortium compliant services for common use on top secret, secret and unclassified domains. And we will demand that every piece of inf intelligence is tied to a place and time, even if it is not traditional geospatial data. This will be true whether it is data from open sources, commercial sources, or governmental sources. Because the biggest impact GWIN services will have for our users is that it will speed up discovery, access to, and processing and visualization of geospatial content to support time-critical tactical requirements. I mentioned a lot of adversaries, but if you ask me the greatest adversary we all have, is speed. Time is crushing us. We cannot afford to tarry. And so we need systems and capabilities that allow us to move at the rate we must. You're going to be able to spend less time hunting and gathering and more time correlating and analyzing. And you're going to be able to more easily communicate using simple GIS tools such as story maps. In sum, we're making changes to how we develop, acquire, and deploy tools that will allow NGA to get solutions to our workforce and to our mission partners much faster and much more effectively. Our fiscal year 2016 plan included building geospatial content management tools into our unclassified and eyesight service offerings. This assists our mission partners as they migrate and manage their own geospatial data into the cloud. And it provides reliability and consistency throughout the intelligence community. 
In addition to the platform, we'll, we will provide central registry and cataloging services that will help users find and get data. Because as we grow the quality and quantity of, of services, users throughout the Department of Defense and Intelligence community and the, can better support the kind of analysis that will determine our future. Let me make this real. At NGA, one of our initiatives is structured observation management, or harvesting the information that is contained in images in an organized manner so it's available for myriad use. Every feature from every image, independent of the frame. Think of the possibilities. But not a single one of those possibilities become real if there are not some services to support finding, getting, sharing, and using these data. Think about that. It isn't enough to have data. You simply must have the services that allow you to manipulate them so that you can test your hypotheses and demonstrate what they show. Now, I've talked a lot about how GeoInt will enable the mission and the common services we're providing. We're also doing a lot behind the scenes. Just to give you one example, we're changing the way we develop and acquire tools that are capabilities needed by our warfighters and first responders and other mission partners. NGA is switching to a DevOps methodology that allows developers and solution providers to get needed capabilities deployed to mission users much more quickly. With this methodology, we're embracing collaboration during solution development process, and we're establishing a developer environment that supports the insertion of software code directly into the NGA cloud. Traditionally, it takes the government years, yes, horrifyingly, years, to request, build, and roll out new IT system or tool. We're reducing that timeline dramatically so that we can push out capabilities in weeks, hours, and my I haven't told my team that yet. Minutes is kind of on my mind. You know, I once heard someone describe me this way. They said, what's Sue really like? And they said, she's always happy and never satisfied. <laughs> I think my team would tell you that's probably true. Anyway, these tools that we're looking at include open source tools such as Redmine, GitLab, Jenkins, and Nexus within our continuous delivery, continuous integration pipeline. We'll be employing this process on all networks, beginning our development in the unclassified domain, adopting the oh-so-useful develop low, push high. We have capabilities already available for geospatial analysts to leverage, including our base visualization and data services, where analysts can discover trusted geoint. <laughs> and of course it's trusted because we're from the government. <laughs> but for example, in G I don't know why I'm cracking myself up this morning. I think you, <laughs> I think you all have just put me in a great mood. Um, or this is just a great opportunity for all of us, right? Um, for example, NGA's Map of the World initiative has delivered our foundation GeoEnt layers as services to support easy access and visualization on five secure domains. And this enables NGA partners as diverse as Army infantrymen and, inter and international users to access our content on the networks where they work. We also use Esri's ArcGIS portal as the ICGIS portal providing a platform for analytic collaboration and data sharing for all of our geospatial users. Our adoption of portal and web GIS promotes the sharing of geospatial data tool sets and services in one location, and it's about time, you must say. As of yesterday, we've had more than 19,000 users log in to the ICGIS portal, which is more than double the number of users we had this time in October of this year. The users in include the traditional IC agencies, but also our partners in the Army, the Navy, and the Marines, the Air Force, and the combatant commands. And nearly 50% of these users have been active in the portal in the last 30 days. Not only do these advantages allow users around the world to collaborate in support of a variety of missions, but all of you can relate to Ms. 
placing the SHX and the PRJ files when sharing data with your colleagues or even moving them within your own computer. And by using the portal, you're not going to have to worry about that. Instead, or you can, instead, you can focus on the mission task at hand. There's yet another advance on Monday, as, on Monday, Esri and USGIF hosted an apps challenge within GA's GeoInt services. Seven apps were developed by six teams in a short eight hours, with teams from NGA, UCOM, DITRA, Naval Surface Warfare Office, and the Naval, Naval Oceanographic Office. And they were all analysts, not developers. Think about what that releases in terms of how quickly we can ask and answer questions. One of the apps developed by an NGA analyst is a business intelligence application for maritime chart production and analysis. Using the tools within the ICGIS portal, the team built a dashboard that integrated business analytics, mapping, and near real-time updates. And breathtakingly, in days, our agency leadership is already looking at how to use this capability to support decision-making on resource prioritization. Another app allows users to perform anticipatory analysis of violence and unrest by analyzing historical data and sharing this as an interactive product using a portal web app. But we're not just about awesome apps. We're also providing a modern, user-friendly, streamlined web presence on all domains, including the World Wide Web. You won't have to piece together the story. You'll have the story all in one place. But enough talk about what we've done and what we're going to do. It's time to demonstrate, because I believe in showing, not telling. We're going to show you an example of how some of the initiatives and tools we've discussed can be applied to one upcoming mission, the security of the 2016 Rio Olympics. It's a lot of work to prepare for any Olympics, and NGA plays a support role to the Department of Homeland Security to keep America safe for democracy. It's a great example of how we apply GeoInt to real-world issues. And I'd like to wel welcome Tracy and Abby to show off. Take it away, ladies. I'm Tracy Tutant from NGA GeoInt Services, and with me is Abigail Desjardins from the GeoInt Services Rapid Feedback Team. NGA has a history of supporting significant events, and we're going to set the stage today by discussing Rio de Janeiro. Rio has hosted several large events in recent years, including the Pan American Games in 2007, the World Cup in 2014, and of course the upcoming Summer Olympics. With millions of tourists and hundreds of events spread over a 17-day period, the Olympics represents a huge challenge for situational awareness, especially when you consider that most of that activity is going to be concentrated in an area about the size of what's enclosed by the DC Beltway. We've created the following demo using WebGIS as the platform to integrate different types of technology and visualization libraries to illustrate the GeoInt services model of providing tools like these to the community in order to reduce infrastructure, increase access for analysts and developers, while also highlighting the openness of Esri's ArcGIS platform. The saying is, a picture is worth a thousand words, and I have a feeling this audience would find that a low estimate. Recently, unclassified commercial imagery has become easier to access, delivered faster from collect to desktop, and at a higher spatial resolution than ever before. This is a series of high-resolution images from Digital Globe over the Olympic Village area in Rio. On the left is an example of a real-time camera feed overlooking Ipanema Beach, which we'll visit again in a moment. Imagery from multiple sources has become indispensable in our industry in adding context, checking status, using as a backdrop, and as a source for collecting and enriching data. Speaking of data, the natural evolution of participatory geography, the increase of open data efforts and data portals, has led to a saturation of data. The time that used to be spent hunting and gathering for information has now been replaced with the need to sort it all, determine its usefulness, its accuracy, its validity, and its purpose. Sometimes data has to be enriched, updated, or conflated. As you can see, this data piles up very quickly. GeoInt Services is committing to supporting more than just data services. We know that we have to support those workflows that make data useful. 
that enable the answering of important questions and that transform information into intelligence. So we're looking at more than just data services. We're supporting analytic services, infrastructure as a service, and software as a service. Knowing where things are is a crucial part of area familiarization and situational awareness, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. Enriching this data allows us to form an understanding of how and when things will occur. In this case, we're looking at where and when crowds of people are expected to be based on the schedule for the 10th day of the Olympics. Hand in hand with this type of anticipatory analysis is the concept of mitigation and response. NGA is evolving our support role by integrating new tools and workflows to help us provide support better and faster. For example, the 2014 World Cup was affected by heavy rains and flooding and even a bridge collapse. While the local government was able to handle the response, we have tools that allow us to explore what the immediate effects of an unexpected event like that could be. Here we're looking at isochrones representing response areas for an event at a major transportation area and what resources, such as hospitals, fire stations, and police stations, might be available for responding within a certain drive time. By that same token, we can explore the effect that disruption would have on people who need to move about the city. Departing from a venue and heading back to a hotel near the beach, the optimal route passes directly through this response area. Dynamic routing allows us to examine multiple route options quickly to find a route that avoids this primary response area. And now that we've made it safely back to the beach, we can use the same type of data that we showed before and enrich it using social media and VGI data to support, I'm sorry, to, to inform planning, resource allocation, and logistics. NGA supports a wide range of partners for these types of events, and it would be impossible for us to predict ahead of time all of the possible questions and data needs our customers might have. So flexibility becomes the key to our success. GeoInt Services wants to support workflows that range from situational awareness, location-based analytics, demographics, spatial econometrics, spatiotemporal interactions, and visualization. NGA support centers on helping our partners to better understand events, planned and unplanned, through the lens of geography. And we want to use GeoInt services as the integrator of technology to support access to data, real-time sensor networks, analysts, and tools to understand what is happening, what might happen, mitigation, response, and examine subsequent effects. All of that work is rendered moot if we cannot communicate that information to decision makers from the executive to the tactical level. We also want to support geospatial collaboration spaces and tools for visualization and storytelling in the cloud, like this map journal we've shown you here. So GeoInt Services represents more than just a new platform at NGA. It's the manifestation of our vision and our approach to unifying efforts that enable workflows. In the end, this empowers analysts, and through that important step, better supports our community. So let me turn this back over to the deputy director to discuss how we can all support Team GeoInt. Great job. So this seemed like a good idea when we set it up to have them in the middle, and now I'm hating the idea of following um, Tracy and Abby. Um, I wanted to add that we're act, uh, also actively pursuing mobile apps for this kind of data. For example, our disconnected interactive content explorer, which we call DICE, is an app that allows users to load interactive content to a mobile device so the device can display that content without a network connection. And there's ASAM, our anti-shipping, anti-privacy application, which includes the locations and descriptive accounts of specific hostile acts against ships and mariners. Both, of our, both are available for Apple and Android, and you can check them out, but not now, because 
today is about me. But we, want, but we want our customers to be able to pull out their smartphones and tablets on the go and get the same type of enriched analysis that they can get from their desktop. Now, the reality of working in intelligence and combat support is that pursuing new data and achieving new capabilities requires balance. A balance between speed and accuracy. A balance between crowdsourced and pedigreed data. A balance between national security needs and civil liberties. And a balance between openness and protection. There are solutions to be had, but they're elusive. And here's what I will tell you, that I believe we, all of us in this room, have arrived at a moment. We need to develop a strong partnership with industry, with academia, with other federal agencies, with you. In order to meet our national security needs, we have to innovate and fast. The current set of commercial tools won't suffice to meet our future national security challenges. I've spent most of our time this morning talking about what we've accomplished so far and what we intend to accomplish in the near future. But let me close by telling you what is still in the offing. We need solutions that will enable our analysts to have simple, easy access to big data. And not just to look through large amounts of data to find single answers, but to actually use the bigness of the data to find the patterns that are not that are not obvious when not looking at the whole. We need to equip our analysts to make sense of that data and to do so when the data are not geographically contiguous or temporally synchronous. We need to provide more and streamlined capabilities and to do so when users are, users are disadvantaged, limited by low bandwidth or network access challenges. We need to move much further toward anticipatory instead of responsive analysis. And to do so when there is no known starting point for understanding the pattern that you're seeing. We need to establish on-the-fly analytic services and tools and make them so flexible that they adapt to the trial and error that is required to answer complex challenges. And we need to develop better modeling capabilities, or to put it another way, to provide better tools to capture knowledge in a useful, repeatable manner. I'm going to add one more challenge, and it's one that all of us in government face, whether we're at the local, state, or federal level. Data assurance, for want of a better term. It was talked about yesterday. I'm going to talk about it today. We have, in 2016, an embarrassment of riches when it comes to content today. Whether it's social media, commercial imagery, or voluntary geographic information, there is so much available to us that was not produced for us. And it can help. But when we, the government, government provide it, there is an expectation that it is somehow validated. How are we going to do that? What can we do that assigns some probability of correctness to data that is available, but not ours? All I have to say is TikTok team, because we really need to get on with this. I couldn't agree more with what Edwin Land said, a personal hero of my organization. He said, don't take on a project unless it is manifestly important and nearly impossible. We have come a great distance, but there is distance still to travel in order to deliver on the promise of GeoInt to attack the challenges, nay, opportunities of the day. But we've made a bit of, bit of magic together to get to this point, and I know there's more to be had. When we match government's purpose, resources, and years of tradecraft with the energy and innovation of industry, good things happen. Let me close by saying that if you're wondering why you're here and why you care, why you care whether NGA moves to the cloud, whether we deliver a portal, whether we embrace GeoInt services, it is because of this truth that when we address our vexing, complex, nearly impossible challenges, we force the development of capability that addresses yours. And that, my colleagues, 
is a very good day. So thank you so much for having me. And uh, Jack, if you'll allow, come on on the stage and let's have a chat. Thank you so much. Yes. Well, why don't you sit down? I'm not, which one? You sit on the right. Okay, good. It's my good, good side. Your good side, yeah. <laughs> I don't have a good side, really. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> uh, okay, so can you understand why NGA is coming alive with a woman like this? Really, I mean, I understand. I was sort of sitting backstage watching this. Uh, she didn't tell me what she was going to talk about. And it just really impressed me that you're trying to create a cultural change in an organization that is somewhat stovepiped, somewhat segmented, and uh, rooted in process mm -hmm. that may be obsolete mm -hmm. given the digital age. So wh what are you up to anyway? I mean, do you have any thoughts about how you're going to do this cultural change? I mean, you must have something in the back of your head talking to you. Yeah, cultural change, easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so one of the things that NGA we're really focusing on is we hate change as much as the next person, but we like relevance more. But the thing that we're talking to our women and men about is how hard this moment really is. And that in the difficulty there is comfort because it means we're doing something right. That when you're faced with the, the moment that we have where the way you used to do it is no longer valid, for what you must accomplish. You have ideas of what, what you want to do. And those ideas are beautiful. They're like unicorns and balloons. <laughs> and, you <pers> <laughs> right? and you pursue them, and then you always get to this moment where it's hard. And all too often, what we decide when it's hard is what? That it means the idea was bad. And so we retreat to come up with another idea, which is way more comfy. And I think where we are, where all of us are, because you know our challenges are not that different from any mature organization that grew up doing something. She's, looking at, she's looking at me when she said mm, that, right? Yeah. I didn't say mature individuals, because that's me. Oh. But um, no, I think, I think we're just trying to convince ourselves that, that we're in the soup, and that the feeling of discomfort it means we're doing exactly what we should be doing. And if we'll hang in there for a couple of years, we'll be on the other side. And that cultural change will be, have been affected because culture loves achievement. I don't care where it started. Yeah, that's true. People do. Yeah, exactly. And they also appreciate acknowledgement. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I, I notice about you as a person is you acknowledge all of your people carefully. Carefully meaning the ones that really do something. Yeah, we have, we have great humans. That's been the, the most fun part of the second half of my first year was to get to know who we have. So we may be facing cultural change, but we are not facing a dearth of ability yes. or a dearth of passion. Our struggle is how we don't treat, how to not treat our processes as, a, as though they were handed down on stone tablets. That they were created by somebody who was faced with a condition in the past that may not be the same condition today. And so it's really totally okay. We can still have the same thing to do, but doing it differently is probably about time. You know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have a chance to meet with a lot of interesting people in my career. Sue is extraordinary to me because she, she not only has great leadership and you saw it demonstrated in the talking here, but she actually gets things done. Uh, anybody here watch the movie Abraham Lincoln? Raise your hand. Remember that movie? I mean, it was an extraordinary movie because what it portrayed is Lincoln not only in his vision, he told the big vision, Emancipation Proclamation, and you know, keeping the union in place, but then what the movie also showed is behind the scenes him doing all the, the back office work of getting it done. You know, remember the little trades he made in Congress and I mean some of it was edgy stuff, right? But it showed the work of a great leader and Sue really reminds me of that because she has the vision and she has a kind of gravity in the organization 
to, you know, pull people together. But then you turn around, you said it before, you know, you're always happy, but you're always driving. <laughs> and she's, you know, she's a, she's a, I just say, get things done. And I, I, le I learned from, from her a lot about that. It's but don't really... you think that, um, um, the, I call them the world is full of philosopher princes. Yeah. And those are people who love to comment on what should be. And that's kind of a dime a dozen. It, to translate that, to hold an image in your head, and to translate into action, and here's the trick, that makes sense to somebody else. Because it isn't, you can't demand that somebody else accept your vision. What you do is you talk about it enough so that they can learn and see what they need to do, and then it becomes shared. So I do think that this act of, I don't know, diving in, because it only matters if it happens. Yes. And you can't be, you can't rest until it happens. Not just be bullshitting about it. Right. And your intention exactly. is, is lovely, well, it's, it's, but, it's but it doesn't right. matter until yeah. it happens, and you somehow exactly have to right. convince yourselves that that's true. There's another question. I, mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot, yes, but sir. sometimes you've talked about... Uh, is this. our time almost done? It's, uh, yeah, you have uh, four minutes and 13 seconds. Got it. <sighs> okay, bring it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Look, NGA has two different worlds yeah. in a way it traditionally did. It had the mm -hmm. geospatial, meaning vector GIS mm -hmm. people, and it had the imagery people. And they're really different domains, different mm -hmm. things, and it didn't really matter that we put the tools together. Uh, there was still this mentality of approaching the world differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have any thoughts about how you can bring these two worlds together, or any languages or ways to get these? Because, you know, it's all just geographic information. It is. And you know, how do you, how does this imagery world yeah. features come together with GIS and bring this whole thing together in your culture? I mean, it's not so much outside of NGA. It's just oddly enough that it's there. Um, you know, don't you love talking to smart people because they ask you questions that force you to, to formulate a brand new thought that you might not have thought. Oh. So if you'll allow. Yes. I'll try and talk my way into this and see okay. what I do. Or out of it, either one. No, because so, so the first is, I think, I think the founders of uh, NGA, NEMA before it, were actually brilliant. Um, because combining the certainty of mapping geography, cartography, and the possibility of intelligence actually allows some really interesting things. But I think up until just a few years ago, they could actually be distinct disciplines. Yes. Right? Where the content was so spectacular that it stood by itself. And the context was so useful to display any issue. Okay, I guess it, it allowed us to display that content, but a number of the things that they could exist separately. You know how I talked about structured observation management? Okay, so this is the deal. What, what is structured observation? Right. So it's what I said. It's, it's you are simply taking the information content out of the image and making it available for use independent of that image. Like in a database. Right. So think about it. Every feature, every layman. And now I can start asking questions. Where have I seen this thing before? All the places it might be. So. It's really exciting to think about when you have all the world's images and all the features contained therein, and now they're available for play. Because what you have to do without that is if someone w wants to know what was going on in Puget Sound, well, you wouldn't ask NGA that because we're not allowed to look at the US, but if you want to know what was going on in Puget Sound today, you'd scramble and see what images you have. And if you wanted to see what happened in Puget Sound 10 years ago, you'd call up your buddies, were you covering the Puget Sound desk back then? You'd have to see who had what. Look what you can do if you've captured all that. You can now compare it. But it only works if you have geospatial reference, geospatial systems, and it is going to bring these two wonderful, traditional, yeah. historic tradecraft together, because one won't work without the other when you get to this point. And I think that's an exciting possibility. And so I'm confident because we're nothing if not driven to succeed for the nation. So an information system can allow us to extract, right. database it, manipulate it. Yeah, you're not going to be able to show a common operating picture without it. 
Yeah. And you're not going to be able to tell, and, and they've got to be accessible and useful because when you start wanting to ask questions about, hey, I wonder if these things are related or these things go together, you are going to be wrong about your hypothesis most of the time. And if producing a look that demonstrates your hypothesis is a three-week process, yeah. you're not going to get there. Not so these there. systems that we're talking about here are what going to bring the information and images to life. I'm so excited about it. So I'm, yeah. I'm really hopeful that... Integration. Yep. Really and I'm hopeful answer, that, yeah. in part, they stayed separate because we didn't have quite the moment that demanded it or could use it. Yeah. They have to be both separate mm -hmm. and integrated. Yep. I, I really agree with that. Look, Sue, thank you so oh, much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's acknowledge Sue for her thank contributions, you. for your leadership. Thank you, thank you so very, much. very, very much. It's beautiful. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you.